subscribe to Diazonic Labs and click on bell icon to get latest updates. When it comes to being an IT tech, you have to be prepared to work on different types of systems. One of the biggest issues is having the correct video display connector. With more than 10 different types of connector, it can be difficult to identify the correct one. The connections look and act differently from each other. You might be wondering how the big badass blue connector is different from the small USB like HDMI connector when both of them are used to connect the computer to a monitor. Well, to clear out all the confusions, this tutorial is all you need to watch. This is Azeev from Diazonic Labs and this tutorial will be focused on display connectors. A few connectors which we'll be going through are VGA, DVI, the single link one and the dual link one, HDMI, display port and mini display port and a couple of more, probably more. Yeah. But this particular video will be more specifically focused on VGA. So abbreviated VGA, Video Graphics Array, is a standard type of connection for video devices such as monitors and projectors. This is also called as D sub interface. This graphics interface standard for video display controller was first introduced with the IBM PS2 line of monitors or computers in 1987, way back. So about what, 30 years back, 30, 40 years back here. Yeah. Though VGA is still in use today, it's being rapidly displaced by new interfaces like DVI, HDMI and display ports. VGA works on analog signals because of which the quality of the output signal is not the same as the input. If you need to know the exact working of analog signal, then you should probably read about the principles of analog and digital signals and signal transmission. All we need to know for now is that for the analog signals, the quality of signal from one end of to the other degrades based on various factors like the length of the cable, the material used in making the cable, the gauge of the cable, etc. etc. The VGA interface was designed based on the monitors at that time, CRT monitors. So the big, huge things, the CRT monitors, yeah. So these displays were the analog displays. Hence, analog interface was created to transmit the video signals at that time. The VGA cable has 15 pins, five pins on the top row, five pins in the middle row, and five pins at the very bottom. Each pin has a function of its own. So if you see here, the pins here have different uh, functionalities. If you see the pin numbers, so for example, the first pin is used to transfer the color red. Second pin is for green and third pin is for blue respectively. Red, green and blue are primary colors in the color palette. And any bit of video signal transferred will be a combination of red, blue and green. If you need to know the details about the other pin, we can have a look at this. There is a ground, there is a no contact, a couple of uh, synchronization the 13th pin and 14th pin are the horizontal and vertical synchronization which allows the computer to judge the screen and then shrink or stretch the display based on the computer size i'll not go into technicalities of it because aspect ratios screen resolution a lot of other things come into picture speaking about screen resolution vga was introduced with 640 slash 480 resolution color display with a refresh rate of 16 hertz and 13 colors displayed at a time. So this means the horizontal number of pixels on the screen were 640 and the vertical pixels were 480. So this was the initial resolution. It showed 16 colors. If the resolution was lower to 320 into 200, 256 colors could be shown. So still good. So that is like the default uh, you could say the default driver or the default ratio on which the PC boots into this resolution. And when we use safe mode for any diagnostics purposes with the display driver disabled, this is the resolution you get. Well, this was not very efficient because 614 to 480 is too low. So in a short time, non-IBM vendors boosted resolution and colors and called them Super VGA or SVGA. Okay, this had the resolution of 800 horizontal pixels and 600 vertical pixels. IBM later introduced something called as XGA to fend off the interest from the competitors. 
So this had 1024 horizontal pixels and 768 vertical pixels, thereby drastically improving the screen resolution and the image enhancement. And over the years, there were lots of uh, different fractions and multiples of the total number of pixels in VGA, and there were lots of different resolutions performed. This is the maximum resolution which is uh, achieved with this interface, that is 2048 into 1536 at 85 hertz, which is pretty good even by today's standards. Comparatively, the popularly known FHD or full HD resolution today is 1920 horizontal pixels into 1080 vertical pixels or what you call as 1080p or full HD. Yes. So if you see the display interface, the resolutions, the maximum supported by VGA is still greater than the full HD one, so it's good. The aspect ratio of the most common display resolutions, uh, which is supported by the VGA is four is to three. That means if we divide these numbers, be it VGA or SVGA or XVGA or the maximum resolution, if we divide the horizontal number by the vertical number, so that would be 1.33, that is four, four times the vertical side and three times the horizontal side. That's called four is to three. Yes, so the ratio will be four, three. So if you divide any of the numbers, 800 by 600, if you do, it's four by three in the fractional form. So that's the aspect ratio. If you need to know more about aspect ratio in future, we'll be releasing a video on screen resolutions, aspect ratio, refresh rate, and other terminologies. But for now, just understand that aspect ratio is the way the screen uh, builds up against the monitor size. Anyway, that's about VGA. Uh, so if you want to know about the aspect ratio, this is the four cross three aspect ratio, which comes up. Most modern computers today, which are commonly used, have 16 cross nine is in 16 times here and correspondingly nine times here. So this would be the resolution for our most commonly known as HD ready, full HD, UHD, ultra HD, quad HD, and other things. So compared to this, if you see the older monitors, they would be this side, but now the monitors are a little broader on the width aspect. Anyway, yes, so this was about the video graphics array. There were quite a few disadvantages of this. That's the reason it is being slowly phased out or rather being phased out already. Okay, let's discuss a few of them. The first thing is there is expected signal loss. This is the main major drawback because these are analog signals because of which what happens is over the period of time, the cable which you use will start reducing the quality or rather the signals will not be very accurate. The signal sent from the processor end will not be the same which is displayed at the output end. There will be some loss which is expected. That's only because there is analog signals. And which is the connector which uses only analog. There is no concept of digital signals. Hence, that's the majority of the reason why this interface is being phased out. The second thing is the connector is bulky. If you had seen the size of the connector, it's quite huge with pins and everything, 15 pins, and the size is too huge compared to the USB or the HDMI connectors which you have. It seems rather large. That was the another drawback. The third drawback is higher resolutions are not supported. With the advancement in technology today, people are using 2K, 4K, and there's also talks of 8K and 10K videos being released. But the maximum resolution here is 2048 into 1536. That's slightly higher than the full HD. It doesn't even match to the 2K resolution. So that was another drawback. And the final drawback is the aspect ratio. So with aspect ratio, what happens is the aspect ratio in these monitors is designed in such a way that it is four cross three. So the older monitors had the size as in, you know, the four cross three sizes of aspect ratio. The newer monitors would be 16 cross nine or rather 16 times on the horizontal and nine times on the vertical lane. So if we use the four cross three uh, connector on that, so the image will be stretched or image might be, you know, shrunk based on the different sizes of the monitor. So that could be causing the problems. So considering all these major drawbacks, we are, we, I would say, you know, only if your monitor or if your computer has VGA interface, there's nothing else use this. If not, 
use the other interfaces. Anything apart from VGA would be better. Even a DVI interface would be a lot better than VGA because that would have the digital input in it or the digital output. Analog signal completely, at least, you know, we would be able to mitigate the first drawback. So that's the learning from here. VGA, use it only if there is nothing else. If not, do not use it. It's a legacy technology. It was introduced 30, 35 years ago. So yeah, it was outdated 10 years ago, I could say, and people are still using it. So we should use it only if there is no other option. Thank you. Please do like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tutorials.